It might be worth giving him a chance. What have you got to lose? Licat volaris is super terbum aquila volat. Licat volaris is super terbum aquila volat. if you want to see the explosion. Explosion? Yeah. That's when we're blowing up the tower. Well, this is it. Look, they're very nice people. It's only for a short time. You never know, you might even enjoy it. Dunstan, please. Tom. Hi. Well, say hello. Hello. Good. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to take Danston's bag and show him where he'll be sleeping, Tom. Okay. You sure this is a good idea, Pam? What do you mean? Of course it's a good idea. It's a wonderful idea. Listen, he'll be fine. He just needs to settle in. Don't worry, we'll look after him. You just get yourself to Bucharest and sell lots of toilets. Yes. Yes, all right. Oh, I've got an emergency number for you. You've already given me one. No, these are the service people for Dunstan's computer. If anything goes wrong, you want to call them out as soon as possible. Believe me. <laughs> You startled me. Sorry, Mrs. Murray. Mega panic at the Erie. Why? What happened? They're blowing up the tower at lunchtime. Oh, goodness. We need to move out and there's nowhere to put everything. Can I leave it here? Well, in the garden? It's just so we find somewhere else. Well, yes, of course. Thanks. What are you going to do about a quilla? What? A quilla. You'll need somewhere else to keep that as well, won't you? Looks like it. If you like, you could hide it in my wood. That's very kind of you, Mrs. Murray. I'll tell Tom. So you're not interested in rocks? Not really. Do you like football? No. You don't follow a team or anything? No. And so what are you interested in? I've got my computer. Oh, great. Let's have a look. Tom! Oh, hi. Meet Dunstan. He's staying with us while he's... We have to talk. I'm sorry, Dunstan. This is kind of urgent. It's 
the earring. Well, what about it? They're going to blow it up. When? Oh, lunchtime. It's all on here. But why? Why would they want Why to... does it matter, Tom? We have to get over there and move our stuff out now. Oh, but I can't. I've got him. Dunstan, we wondered if you could do us a small favour. So how long is he staying? Four days, while Alan's on his sales mission to Romania. Oh, sounds great. The perfect chance for the boys to get to know each other. Yes. So what's wrong? Well, the thing is, although he's brilliantly clever... This is the one who got GCSE maths when he was seven, right? Yes. I'm not sure he's got a lot in common with Tom. And if they don't get on, I mean, if it turns out they can't stand each other or something, where does that leave me and Alan? If we ever want to set up home together? Hi, Mum. Hi. We're going swimming. What, now? Yes. Why? Well, that's what Dunstan said he wants to do. Oh, I see. Well, you'll need some money, won't you? And it might not be wise to take your computer, Dunstan, if that got stolen or anything. I'll have a look after it for him. There you are. Have a good time. Doesn't look like you've got much to worry about there. No. It's a funny thing about boys. You often find they can be very caring and protective of younger children. And we'll see you at the swimming pool in about three hours, OK? Here's the money. All right, then, off you go. Oh, Dunstan. If anyone asks, don't forget you've been with us all morning, OK? Where is it? Just by the garage. My computer! I can't believe it. Why would they want to knock it down? Well... I mean, there's a church. You're not allowed to knock down churches. According to those plans, they want to build an orphanage. Huh. And that makes it all right, I suppose. Right, let's go. Oh, hang on. I've got the plans. Oh, don't worry about them. We have to get to the tower. Where are we going to put all this stuff once we've taken it? Mrs Murray's garden. Well, can you think of anywhere better? Well, what about Quilla? Where are we going to keep that? Mrs Murray suggested hiding it under some logs. I don't know, Tom. We'll find somewhere. Oh, really? Do you remember how long it took us to find this place? Tom, I don't like moving any more than you do, but we've got no choice. They're blowing this place up in three hours, and we don't listen to mementos like this floating around to let everyone know we were here. What are you doing now? I'm not leaving the top of Mount Everest behind. Put it down. What? Put it down. Now I just bring it around here like this. And mind your head. Ow! Behind? I'm afraid so, Mrs. Murray. All of it. We've got no choice, Tom. And Mrs. Murray's sofa. We can't leave that. We can't bring it back, can we? It won't fit. And we could carry it underneath with the tractor beam. That's how we got it up there. We got it up there at night, Tom. In daylight, I think people are going to notice a sofa floating across the sky. Oh, dear, it is difficult, isn't it? I'll go and have a word with Chief Running Water. See if he's got anything helpful to suggest. It's not a good sign, is it? What? Well, the one thing that gives you hope is an old lady going off to talk to a dead red Indian. Here, I'll put some more of that round the base with Sour. And William, I don't want anyone going in there, OK? Sure. Excuse me? Hey, doesn't anyone read signs anymore? It clearly says all the... And where did you get these? I found them in the garden. Oh, did you? Well, I've been looking for these half the morning. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I thought somebody... Benny. Benny, no! Not with an hammer! That's where it's worth, Mother! We want to move 
frightens me. What? Is something happened to him? I mean, if he hurts himself or has an accident, what's Alan going to think? Oh, I should never have let him go out on his own. Oh, he's not on his own, is he? He's got the boys with him. That's another thing that worries me. Oh, be fair, Pam. You saw them. They didn't have to take him swimming. You know that neither of them likes going to that pool. They were doing it for him. Yes. Yes, you're right. They're good boys. You don't have to worry. They'll look after him. You get the flags, I'll bring the photos. Uh, we need to make sure that we don't leave. Is this you and Paige? Oh, yeah. That was the night I flew her back to Helsinki. You didn't say anything about taking her to a disco. It wasn't a disco. It was a party. A party? We got back to her house and there was this party she going on. So she asked me to... I want you to nip up, take a quick look round, make sure there's nothing valuable off there, OK? Benny, be careful. Quick, get in! We want to knock out anyone in the tower. Jeff? Except us, obviously. Okay, do it. Yes, now! Ah! What did you do that for? Well, to stop them coming up and finding us, Tom. We don't have to knock people out to stop them from getting up here, Jeff. No. It's a much simpler way. What happened? Fell off a ladder, boss. He just let it go and fell off. Benny. Benny. How many fingers am I holding up, Benny? Whoa. I'll take that as three then, shall I? Come on, let's get back to work. There's plenty to do. Come on, let's move it. Chop, chop. What is it now, eh? We think maybe we shouldn't be doing this. What? What are you talking about? We think maybe they don't like it. Who? The dead people. You think it was dead people pushed Benny off the ladder? And we've heard voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We freeze it. The whole tower. With the tractor beam. Like I did with Mrs. Murray in the garage. And you think that'll keep everyone out? It puts everything in a different temporal algorithm, Jeff. Nobody's going to get through that trapdoor with anything short of a nuclear warhead. So all we have to do is zap it? Right. Now, why didn't I think of that?
So, I'm supposed to ring Mr. Woodley, am I? And tell him that we can't do the job because the dead people in the cemetery don't like it. Come on, lads, be reasonable. <laughs> oh, what is it? The tower! That's right, it's a church tower. And we're here to knock it down, because that's what we're getting paid. Ah! 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 Hey, stay where you are, all of you. Stay where you are. It's a perfectly rational explanation for all this. I thought you might like something to drink. Thank you, Mrs. Murray. And I've got a message for you from the chief. He said to tell you, when the river bursts its banks, the wise warrior moves his teepee. That was the message? Well, there was a bit more about a blind muskrat, but to be honest, I don't think it helped. Well, uh, thank him very much anyway. Yes, I'm sorry about that. How's it going? It's a disaster. The white men are trying to get into the tower, just not one of them unconscious, and we still have no idea where we're going to keep everything. Or Aquila. Oh, dear. Well, I have offered you my wood. What? That was very kind of you, Mrs Murray. But shifting those logs each time... It could be a bit tricky. What do you mean? The logs. I think... Logs? Why would you want to hide a quiller in a pile of logs? I said my wood. Ten and a half acres. The chief and I keep it for picnics. There you are. Murray's wood, you see? That's your wood? It belongs to my family. Since I'm all that's left, it belongs to me. A real wood? I thought perhaps if you built yourself a little hut or something out there, you'd still have to move all your stuff out, of course. No, we wouldn't. What? And we don't have to build anything. I've just realised what he meant. The chief. We don't move our stuff. We move the teepee. <laughs> we move the teepee. I think you'd better come and look. Oh. Ben. <laughs> Is he dead? Well, uh, he's not breathing or nothing. Work on something this big. Well, we're not going to know unless we try, are we? Ready? Oh, hang on. I've got someone glued to the wall. Oh, oh. you're going to have to turn it off, then turn it back on again. Okay. Uh, remind me how we do that again, will you? Sean, I want you to go back to the van, get the mobile phone, and ring for the police. What we need's a priest! And tell him we need an ambulance! Vegas! I want you to go down to the phone box, ring Mr. Woodley and ask him to come up here now. If he's grave race, Mr. Woodley's going to be no use. For the last time, William, there are no such things as grave race. I read about him in a Stephen King book. Will you shut up about Stephen King for a minute? We've got enough problems here, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Away from this wall! Come on, Benny, son!
bonus for doing this job in less than three days, wasn't it? And on top of that, we get a much nicer view. I'll find Mrs. Murray as well while I was down there to let her know that I went okay. No, oh, good move. I hope we don't have another day like that for a long while. No, I quite enjoyed it. You what? Well, you know, big panic. And it looks like you're going to lose everything. So you go rushing round, thinking, doing things. Mm. And everything's all right. I thought it was quite fun. You're serious? Mm, yeah. You didn't? What? Being scared witless, wondering if you'd killed anyone, knowing the tower was going to be blown up. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed every second. Oh. Where is he? Who? Dunstan. Can't see him anywhere. No, I noticed that. I think he must have got out before we came. You know, gone off to get changed. Hello, Alan. It's me. No, no, nothing's wrong. That's why I'm ringing, really. Dunstan? No, he's fine. Yes. They got on so well. Almost as soon as you left, they all went swimming together. Allergic? Is he? Well, I don't think so. I've just had a call from Tom, and he says it's been a very successful morning. No, I don't understand it either. Sally says it's a, a classic example of juvenile peer group bonding in response to external social pressures. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I said. Well, anyway, I just wanted you to know that everything's wonderful and there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about at all. And Aquila continues on Thursday at ten past five, only here on CBBC One.